Research and Innovation in Futuris. In Europe, we use nearly four times more energy per capita than in Asia or South America. And 30% of this consumption is domestic. Analyze them and the statistics get worse. At least 16% of this energy is wasted. To see how this might change, we go to Manchester in the UK. Here, scientists are helping people save energy. But not through home improvements or buying new houses or greener appliances, just by providing a simple way of understanding people's energy consumption. Well, I'm just going to show you a meter. Oh, great. Let's do it. And you oh, see wow. temperatures of 21 degrees in here. Brilliant. The main aim of the DMS project is really to influence behaviour change in the end user, how they manage their home's energy, but also how they use the information they're receiving. So be probably a light on, possibly. A few simple meters on, give people sure real-time information yeah. about their energy yeah, consumption. So I would actually be thinking, well, what have I left on? So I go and have a look around the house. We have one simple base kit, which just monitors the household's main energy consumption. But we also have a level of appliance level monitors. Um, and that allows us for, uh, to provide a much more detailed understanding of each household's energy usage. Fiona has the base kit for electricity, and now she's getting another one for gas. I think I am doing things better. I think I'm looking at some of the appliances in my house, which I wouldn't have ordinarily have looked at, um, because I noticed them on screen. And although if you didn't have something to see that, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. When Fiona turns the kettle on, she can see how much energy she's consuming and what it costs. I think it's been the easiest technology anybody could use. Uh, I will definitely carry on using it and I hope that the project will allow me to keep some of it, but if not, then I think I will go out and buy myself some equipment. Our last analysis of the results showed that actually our living lab users are saving up to 8% on their um, overall energy consumption from when they started the project. And we're hoping by the end of that, we will double that and hopefully even get to a 20% figure for the DHEMS Living Labs. Here in Mannheim, Germany, scientists are working on another European Union research project devoted to controlling consumption. Mr. Nagy comes back from work, but even while he was out, his house was saving energy. We have some smart gateways that you can install in your house and that can control some of the appliances, for example, the washing machine or your freezer. And uh, gateway uh, chooses the right point in time for the consumption. You just load the washing machine and leave it. Then the gateway will turn it on when electricity prices drop or when Mr. Nagy wants it to once he's checked electricity prices on the internet. With this system, we've changed our habits of using our electrical appliances. We now use them at different times. First, we look at the times when electricity prices are lower, and this way we save money and electricity when using our appliances. But Mr. Nagy also uses more renewable energy than his neighbours because the gateway turns his appliances on when renewable energy is available. So you can imagine that if uh, you have a lot of wind or a lot of sun, then there's a lot of uh, electricity coming from wind power plants or solar power plants. And uh, if you, in, in these times, electricity would be cheaper than in others. And you want to consume at exactly these points in time. And the technology we are developing helps you to do it at the right point in time. Some houses in the project produce their own solar energy. And the gateway can also control how it's used. The way it works today is if you have a photovoltaic plant uh, on your roof, for example, you sell it to the grid. But it can also be different. It can also stay within the community of your neighborhood and you could directly sell it to your neighbor who then consumes it. 
find out if it's possible to be completely energy independent, we went to Lavrio, just south of Athens, in Greece. This is a very special building. All its energy needs are supplied by its own wind and solar power generators. The problem that we are going to address here is that renewable energy sources generate energy not continuously and not steadily. Therefore, when you have renewable energy sources in the building, the energy produced from RES is not always equal to the energy consumed in the building. Either sometimes it is higher, sometimes it is lower. Therefore, when it is higher, you have to store the excess of energy. When it is lower, you have to use energy stored inside the building. Storing energy in batteries would require too many of them, and batteries have a short life. So here, using electrolysis, they transform excess energy into hydrogen and store that. The idea of the hydrogen came from considering the balance between energy produced and energy used, and the possibility of storing energy as hydrogen, which could be used later to produce electricity or heat a house. Hydrogen is a gas. When it is used to produce electricity or heat, does not generate any greenhouse gases. Hydrogen, when burned or when used in fuel cells, produces only pure water and not carbon dioxide. This project aims to integrate hydrogen storing systems into whole neighborhoods, big buildings, or even into individual houses. The future hydrogen house will perform better if the house is low energy consuming. Uh, when uh, a building has low consumption of energy, then the whole system which is required to fulfill its energy needs is smaller and therefore more economical. Controlling how energy is used is a vital part of reducing energy consumption and making our homes more environmentally friendly.